Willa, Lord Wyman smiled. Did you see how brave she was? Even when I threatened to have her tongue out, she reminded me of the debt White Harbour owes to the Starks of Winterfell, a debt that can never be repaid. Willa spoke from the heart, as did Lady Leona. Forgive her if you can, my lord. She is a foolish, frightened woman, and Willis is her life. Not every man has it in him to be Prince Aemon the Dragon Knight or Simeon Star Eyes, and not every woman can be as brave as my Willa and her sister Winifred, who did know, yet played her own part fearlessly. When treating with liars, even an honest man must lie. I did not dare defy King's Landing, so long as my last living son remained a captive. Lord Tywin Lannister wrote me, himself, to say that he had Willis. If I would have him freed unharmed, he told me, I must repent my treason, yield my city, declare my loyalty to the boy king on the Iron Throne and bend my knee to Roos Bolton, his warden of the north. Should I refuse, Willis would die a traitor's death, White Harbor would be stormed and sacked, and my people would suffer the same fate as the reigns of Castamere. I am fat, and many think that makes me weak and foolish. Uh, mayhaps Tywin Lannister was one such. I sent him back a raven to say that I would bend my knee and open my gates after my son was returned, but not before. There the matter stood when Tywin died. Afterwards the phrase turned up with Wendell's bones to make a peace and seal it with a marriage pact they claimed. But I was not about to give them what they wanted until I had Willis safe and whole. And they were not about to give me Willis until I proved my loyalty. Your arrival gave me the means to do that. That was the reason for the discourtesy I showed you in the merman's court, and for the head and hands rotting above the sealed gate. You took a great risk, my lord, Davis said. If the phrase had seen through your deception, I took no risk at all. If any of the phrase had taken it upon themselves, to climb my gate for a close look at the man with the onion in his mouth, I would have blamed my jailers for the error and produced you to appease them. Davis felt a shiver up his spine. I see. I hope so. You have sons of your own, you said. Three, thought Davis, though I fathered seven. Soon I must return to the feast to toast my friends of Frey, Mandalay continued. They watch me, sir. Day and night their eyes are on me, noses sniffing for some whiff of treachery. You saw them. The arrogant sir Jared and his brother Rhaegar, that smirking worm who wears a dragon's name. Behind them both stands Simon, clinking coins. That one has bought and paid for several of my servants and two of my knights. One of his wife's handmaids has found her way into the bed of my own fool. If Stannis wonders that my letters say so little, it is because I dare not even trust my maester. Theomore is all head and no heart. You heard him in my hall. Maesters are supposed to put aside all loyalties when they don their chains. But I cannot forget that Theomor was born a Lannister of Lannisport and claims more distant kinship to the Lannisters of Casterly Rock. Foes and false friends are all around me, Lord Davis. They infest my city like roaches, and at night I feel them crawling over me. The fat man's fingers coiled into a fist, and all his chins trembled. My son Wendell came to the twins, a guest. He ate Lord Walder's bread and salt, and hung his sword upon the wall to feast with friends. And they murdered him. Murdered, I say. And may the phrase choke upon their fables. I drink with Jared, jape with Simon, promise Rhaegar the hand of my own beloved granddaughter, 
But never think that means I have forgotten. The North remembers, Lord Davis. The North remembers, and the Mummer's fast is almost done. My son is home. <laughs>